surprise to no one, I'm kind of big. I'm kind of fat, you know? Like I got some, I got some man boobs or whatever. My, um, my fiance likes to take the old clothes that I have and she makes pillows out of them. What is going on guys? So today we're back with another deep dive and today we're actually going to be looking at our final dragon for this week. Basically, we have Kingdra today who is a water and dragon type Pokemon maxing out at 2641 with a 0-1 attack, 15 defense, and 13 stamina though. At level 21.5 you do hit 1498 which is perfect for the Great League which means we do have the maximum amount of stat product available to us inside the Great League itself. Now if we actually take a look at Kingdra versus all the other participants in the Timeless Cup, we do have 68th in bulk and 60th in stat product, which is actually pretty decent. I mean, compared to the other dragons, we're definitely doing better than Flygon. And if I'm not mistaken, we're doing better than Dragonair too. So looking pretty good so far. Now, of course, all this does come from our base stats with a 194 on attack, 194 on defense, and a 181 in stamina. We're actually looking pretty good. Now, of course, we know that stats are only half the picture. Our moves make up the majority of the picture, though, so let's actually jump into these. We do have three different fast moves that we can choose from, Water Gun, Dragon Breath, and Waterfall. Water Gun clocks in at three energy per turn for three damage per turn. After stab, we do get 3.6. Dragon Breath also clocking in at three energy per turn for four damage, which does mean we get 4.8 after stab. Waterfall being the odd man out here for 2.66 energy, we do get four on the damage, which does mean we get 4.8 after stab. So right away, Based on process of elimination, water guns should kind of be cut because we have better options in terms of damage, and waterfall kind of gets cut because we have a better option in energy as well, so Dragon Beth ends up being our best possible fast move to go with here, so that's the one we're going to choose. Out of our charge moves though, we do have an interesting scenario here. We have Hydro Pump, we have Blizzard, and Outrage. Outrage is probably going to be a guaranteed pick. Uh, it gets a stab benefit, it's the lowest energy cost, it's decent on the damage. There's just not a whole lot of reason not to run it. Out of Hydro Pump and Blizzard though, they're almost the exact same move. The only difference is that we do get a stab benefit from Hydro Pump, so Blizzard kind of gets left behind with a little bit of damage kind of left on the table, but honestly between these two moves I really think that you could pick and choose just based on coverage that your team needed. Let's say you're worried about grass type Pokemon and you would rather have Blizzard rather than Hydro Pump there to help cover your grass type weakness on other Pokemon that you're carrying. Maybe you have a fire type weakness that you need help covering. It would make more sense obviously to go with Hydro Pump on your Kingdra rather than Blizzard. It just kind of depends on which one you really need more coverage for. PV Pokey does prefer Hydro Pump. I'm assuming it's because it gets the extra stat benefit. It works better in simulations. So I, we're just gonna stick with that just cause it's kind of simpler and easier. But hey, for what it's worth, go with either move. I think depending on what your weakness is on your team, it would definitely be good to have. So like I said, what we're gonna do is run Dragon Breath, Hydro Pump, and Outrage for the rest of this video, which kind of carries us into our shield scenarios in the zero versus zero against the entire cup. We do actually start out with a 79.6%, which is actually really good. Uh, we're looking for at least a 50% here, so nice. In the two versus zero, we actually have a whopping 100% which is amazing. In the zero versus two, we are looking for at least double digits here, so at least 10%, and we blow that out of the water with a 20.4%, holy cow! That's pretty freaking good. Last but not least, we do round out with the 2v2, ending up with an 82.7%, which is huge. That is a ton of wins for us. It looks all fine and dandy here, but when I got to the meta section, I was like, boom, here we go, let's see this. And then it kind of fell apart. So the zero versus zero is a 69.2, fairly respectable. One versus zero, 100%, I like it. Zero versus one is a 2.6. What happens to Kingdra whenever it gets up against these meta relevant Pokemon? It had amazing reviews. Like I was struggling to find things to like actually help us in the Dragonair video up against Kingdra. Uh, it's a really good contender up against Flygon itself. Like. What in the world happened? Then we move into the one versus one, which is a 
you know, we're looking for at least 50% and we definitely did not find it with Kingdra here. So it's kind of awkward. And we're gonna take a look through all of these matchups to figure out really what it is, but I honestly don't have a concrete answer. We just kind of fall apart in a lot of these matchups. It's really weird. So remember this 38.5. I'm gonna disappear for a second. Let's look at all these wins. We have Cast Form, Sunny Form, Haunter, Blaziken, Ninetales, Charizard, Blastoise, Rainy, Cast Form. We do have Typhlosion, Flygon, Lantern, Banet, Torkoal, Shellgun, Dragonair, and Sceptile. So straight away, as you can see in those wins, we do have Dragonair and Flygon. We're doing good up against the other dragons, which I like. In terms of our losses, we do have a tie for what it's worth up against ourselves and plant form Wormadam. Then we do get into our straight up losses, which is Drapion with Infestation, Venomoth, Dustox, Ludicolo, Whizcash, Drapion with Ice Fang, Beedrill, Skuntank, Ivysaur, Lapras, Venusaur, Gloom, Cat's Form, Snowy Form, Muck, Celio, Victory Bell, Glalie, Frostlass, Swampert, Blossom, Quagsire, and Meganium. I was totally expecting way less Ice types in here because we do have a pretty big advantage over them. We're going to be taking neutral damage. It is going to basically be neutral versus neutral it's not like we have anything super effective against them but I mean I thought at least neutral versus neutral we would at least win but I guess not so I'm gonna come back to the screen here we're gonna take a look into our ripe and rotten section we're gonna take all of these losses and kind of break them down into categories and figure out what we do really bad up against so we can find out what pairs really well with Kingdra so our first section that I figured out that we actually do pretty bad up against are the grass types. Things like Meganium, Ivysaur, and Ludicolo all show up in our losses, which is kind of weird because we do have a sort of resistance to them. Either way, one of the best things that I found that actually pairs well with Kingdra to go up against those grass types is going to be the poison typings. Things like Venusaur itself, Muck, or even Skuntank could do really well here to help counterbalance those grass type Pokemon. Another section that we have a ton of problem with is the ground type. So things like Quagsire, Swampert, and Whizcash, basically the Mud Boys like I've been preaching all week. Uh, of course, the best thing to go up against those though would be something in the grass type realm like Ivysaur, Victor Bell, or Belong. Awesome. Those type of things will really help up against that super duper weakness that the Mud Boys do carry. Our last category that gives us a ton of trouble is actually going to be the Ice Typing. Frostlass, Glalie, Celio, going to be a big problem. Surprisingly, I really did not expect that. But one of the best things to kind of help us out here would be the Fire Type. So Typhlosion, Charizard, Cat's Form, and its Sunny Form all do really well here and I think would actually pair really well with Kingdra. So taking a look at these sections, like, I just, I, it's weird. Like I was expecting Kingdra to really, really shine. I thought maybe Kingdra, I was like somehow unknowingly saving the best for last out of the dragon types because it just kept getting better and better from Dragonair to, well, I, I kind of think Flygon's a little worse than Dragonair, but I, I was thinking like, okay, like Kingdra seems to be the one that's even better than Dragonair, but it's awkwardly not. So it's kind of weird, but I say that Kingdra is a powerhouse, an amazing powerhouse as a closer. But as an opener, or even like in the shield scenarios where you have both the same shields, no, I'm not liking it. It's really awkward. I thought it would perform a lot better, but unfortunately it just doesn't. So that is actually gonna be it for Kingdra today, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. As always, remember, if you wanna help dictate what Deep Dive comes out next, jump into the Discord, which is linked in the description below. And uh, yeah, you can basically help decide what comes up next. So that is actually gonna be it for now. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna head out and see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, always remember that if you like to like videos, you could do that. But if you don't, you could be that guy. Otherwise, uh, let me know what you have to say down in the comments below about the video. I do highly appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to support me in any way, there are several links down in the description for Patreon, uh, joining the community here on YouTube, or even just directly PayPal if that's your thing. I greatly appreciate everyone's name that's on screen as you guys have showed some sort of support outside of just viewing the videos. And I thank you guys, you, you don't understand from the bottom of my heart. So until our next video guys, I will catch you then.